We rescued some baby raccoons. Not just one raccoon, but three baby raccoons from a fallen tree. Guys, can you hear them? Oh my goodness. So look at this. They're suckling our fingers, trying to drink, trying to get the mother's milk. What is up everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope all of you guys are having just an absolutely amazing day. And for those of you that are new here, well, I'm Jacob. This is Theo Jr., my capuchin monkey and Theo just peed all over my back. Thank, thank you for that. Well, if you guys saw the title and thumbnail, well, you will know for today's video that we rescued some baby raccoons. Not just one raccoon, but three baby raccoons from a fallen tree. Guys, that's all I'm gonna tell you. If you wanna know how those raccoons are doing, where they are now, what's going on with them, well, guys, you are in the right place. But before we do that, well, I have a special message from today's sponsor. And before we go any further with today's video, well, I just wanna give a special thank you to Narwhal for sponsoring today's video. And I'm sure you guys are wondering what in the heck is Narwhal. Well, Narwhal is actually an automatic robot vacuum that actually vacuums and mops for you so you don't have to. And here is the Narwhal in all her glory. So we've got our big base right here and for our mopping features we have our clean water reservoir and our wastewater reservoir. We've got our mopping pads right here, our detergent sheets which go in the clean water, but we're not gonna be mopping right this second. I'm gonna show you all those features in just a second, but first we're gonna actually have this thing do some vacuuming. I've got my house completely mapped out and all you do is you click the play button right here start or the start, oh well, start vacuuming. So we're gonna start vacuuming. Once you click that button, the vacuum comes on out and, it, and there she goes, she's on the move, she's vacuuming. So she's gonna use these little duster blades right here to actually sweep up Okay, so while the narwhal is vacuuming, we're gonna get this vacuum ready to mop. So we're gonna take out our clean water reservoir. So we've got our clean water right here. And to get this started, well, we're just gonna open this latch right here. Well, basically, all you do is you take one of these detergent sheets just like this and you actually just place it in the water. And this is going to dissolve entirely. And then this is what's going to actually clean your floor. So you can see it just dissolved. Once it's dissolved, basically, you're gonna take this, you're gonna latch it on shut, and we're gonna put it right back in. The narwhal is back, and let's see what we got this time. So, you know, take this out. This is your filter cartridge, and look at that. Do you guys see that? Look at all this dirt in just 10 minutes. 10 minutes of vacuuming and all this nasty stuff. So now that we vacuum, it's time to mop. So basically, you just flip this on over, pop this on off, just stick these on right here. We've got one more, and let's see, we are on. All right, we're going. We're ready to mop, and as you can see, we've got our the floor is wet, it's mopping. The narwhal is back from mopping, so let's flip her on over and see what we've got here. Oh my goodness, look at this. As you can see, we're completely black, it's nasty, and this is from literally just 10 minutes of mopping. So I can't even imagine what it will look like in an hour. Guys, I can't recommend Narwhal enough. It's an incredible vacuum system that vacuums and mops your floors. So if you guys hate mopping and vacuuming just like I do, well guys, Narwhal is the vacuum for you. So all you guys gotta do is go right now, click the link in my description, and you guys can get your very own. And now that you guys got to hear all about Narwhal and its incredible features, well now it's time to hop into today's Raccoon Rescue. All right guys, I'm in the car right now and it's another day and another rescue. So I just got a phone call from a friend of mine saying that she actually found, well I don't know if it was her or her husband, but they actually found uh, three baby raccoons in a fallen palm tree. This palm tree fell in the middle of the road and there was actually kind of a cavity, a hole in this palm tree and they actually were looking in the palm tree to see if there was nesting birds, but they didn't find nesting birds, but they found three baby raccoons. They told me that these raccoons, they don't have their eyes open yet, so they must be, you know, about a week old or so, that they're furry. I've got this picture right here. This is the picture, this is the text message that I got about these raccoons. So that's today's rescue. We're gonna be going and rescuing these baby raccoons that were found in this fallen tree. I'm not sure how these raccoons are, if they're injured, what is going to happen with them. All I know is I'm gonna go pick up these raccoons. I'm gonna be giving a buzz to the wildlife rehabber that's local down here, and we're gonna be trying to give these guys some help. So guys, if you wanna see how these baby raccoons are, well, I just hop in the car. I'm on my way to pick them up. So guys, let's go save some baby raccoons. One hour later. Okay, so I just picked up the raccoons. Guys, can you hear them? Can you hear this right here? So my friends that actually found these are actually uh, parrot breeders, um, but they don't really deal with mammals, but these raccoons are clearly starving. Listen to them. 
Oh my goodness. So we have three baby raccoons right here that are crying for their mother. Guys, it's okay. Guys, it's okay. So these guys seem like they're quite hungry and it seems as if like they're calling for their mother. So we've got one right here and they appear to be active now. It's actually a good sign that these guys are not lethargic. The, the fact that they're making noises and they're active is a good sign because if they were dehydrated, they would be lethargic, but they very well might be dehydrated. Guys, we've got these raccoons here, so I'm gonna get off the camera right now. I'm gonna give a call to the wildlife rehabber. We're gonna see if the wildlife rehabber will take them in because right now a lot of places are not taking in little baby raccoons because there's a distemper virus going around and a lot of the rehabbers will not take them in because they don't want to have an outbreak at their facilities. Oh, look. He's sucking on my hand, guys. He's, look, he's clearly starving, suckling on my hand right here. So we're going to get these guys put in the box. I'm going to call the rehabber, but in the meantime, I'm going to head over to my sister's house, and we're going to get these guys set up until we can get them to the rehabber. One minute, 37 seconds later. Okay, so I just got to my parents' house, and I actually didn't tell Hannah what exactly I had coming. I All right, so I'm coming in now, and again, Hannah has no idea what I have. I told her I was bringing some animals, but I didn't tell her what. Hannah? Oh, she's right here. Hannah. Hannah, what? look what I have. I have something in this box. So is this it? is going to be a surprise for Hannah. What do, you, what do you think is in the box? I have no idea. You well, come home with different things every night. All right, well, take the box. Why don't you take the whole okay. box? Why don't you open it on up and see the babies? <gasps> do you know what those are? Oh, my gosh. They're baby raccoons. Baby raccoons. <gasps> look at this little oh tiny baby gosh. now. They're definitely starving now. Now, for everyone wondering, I called the wildlife rehabber. Uh, they did not answer the phone, so I'm going to be calling a couple other ones because, again, there are several wildlife rehabbers here in South Florida. These guys are clearly starving, but by law, we're not licensed to rehab native wildlife, so we can't feed them, but the best we can do is get them set up, keep them warm until the rehabber can take them. Is that the second one that you looked at? Yeah. Wait, wait, let's see his belly. We want to make sure he's okay, so we've got all these raccoons. But Hannah, look, do you, we need to get them set up. We need to get them some heat. Yeah, we need to get freezing. them out of this. We need to get them out of this box right here, so we need to get them set up with some a heating pad, some blankets, and maybe a bin. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Okay, so Hannah and I, we're going to go, I think we should set them up in the garage because yeah, that's the warmest warmer. area, so while we wait for the wildlife rehabber to get back to us we're gonna set these guys up in the garage and hopefully they'll make it all right we've got the babies and we're gonna go outside right now so hannah do you have uh, everything that we need yes yeah, so we have everything set up right here we just here, gotta put it together guys. okay so you, i think we should put those guys down on the floor for right now so we're gonna we're gonna set up their area until we hear back we're gonna examine each and every one of them but Hannah, explain what we're doing today because we got to give these guys some heat. We've got to give them a blanket, and I, I think that's it, right? Yeah, so the reason that we're giving them the heat is because since they're so little, they can't regulate their body temperature. So we want to put it probably on, stay on, of course, but probably on the third setting so it's okay. not, wait, not wait, too hot. Let's see what we're doing. So right we're here. using a heating pad right here. We have it on setting number three, which is like kind of a medium heat, which should yeah. be good because they, these guys are warm-blooded. So... We're gonna put that as the base inside of this bin for them. So let's get that set up for them. We got this as the base, and let me feel it. Is it already warm? Oh yeah, I can already it's feel already it. Getting a little warm. I can already feel really this fast. heating up, so that's a good sign. So. Yeah, but if you see, the reason that we're putting it only on half of it, or a little more than half, is because if these babies get too hot, they can escape to a cooler area right here, so it gives them that option if, if they need to. Okay, so we've got our heating pad. Now let's get our blanket in there. Okay. So we've got our blanket, which that's, I guess, what they're gonna lay on, so that's gonna keep them from going directly on top of the heating yeah, pad. Yeah, to make so. them not too, too hot. So if you guys find a raccoon, um, don't ever try to hand feed them because again, in most states, you need to be a licensed rehabber to actually feed or rehabilitate the raccoons. And if you're not tr properly trained, you could actually do more harm than good by trying to feed them. So Hannah, maybe we should do an exam on all of them. So, all right, let's check them out. Let's see how they're doing. So let's pick up one of them right here. So we have one baby raccoon. So this guy, I mean, how old do you oh, think look, they are? Oh, look, he's sucking my, th my I know, finger. he was sucking my finger too. So these guys are clearly starving. As you can see, look at this. They're suckling our fingers, trying to drink, trying to get the mother's milk. Now, let's see, is this a boy or a girl? Let's it's take a look. It's a boy, look. It's a boy? Yeah, you see right there? Oh my gosh. Right under where his umbilical cord was? Yeah, I see that right there. I see it. So let's get him in the bin. Okay. So Hannah got the first one. Now, I'm going to get the second one out of the box right here. So we're just going to gently grab him just like this. And we have another raccoon. Now, we want to see if they're dehydrated. They're clearly hungry. As you can see, he's trying to suckle my finger. But one thing with baby animals is if you actually pinch the back of their neck, not hard, but just pinch the skin together, 
if the skin stays up, that means he's dehydrated, but the skin is going right back down, which means this guy seems to be pretty well hydrated. Now you can see he's got this fluffy fur, and it's kind of hard to even tell he's a raccoon if you don't look at him from the face. So I think that's another boy, Hannah. You see that? Yeah, it is a boy. That's another boy, and these guys don't even have any teeth yet. So we've got this little raccoon. Let's get him on in with his other brother. Now we have our last raccoon here. So let's see. Maybe we got a girl. Maybe we've got a boy, guys. So I don't know. But guys, comment down below. Is this is this last raccoon a boy or a girl? I guess we're going to find out in three, two, one. It's a girl. Look at that. So you can see we have a little girl raccoon right here. So we've got two brothers and a sister. Now, the sister is actually a little bit smaller than the other ones. And look, just like the other ones, you can see that this raccoon right here is trying to nuzzle my finger. You can see that even at a young age, they have their full set of claws right here, but they're tiny micro claws. So these little guys are absolutely adorable. So guys, we need a squad name for these raccoons. So let's just put them down here. But Hannah, I think that these guys are, I think that they're pretty healthy. What do you think? Yeah, they seem pretty healthy, but they're definitely starving. These guys are definitely starving. So there really is only one thing left to do. And you know what that is, right? What? We're going to keep these guys here, and we got to call, I mean, I called Lloyd. He, uh -huh. he didn't answer. Now we have the South Florida Wildlife Center. Um, we also have Flamingo Gardens, and I have another friend I'm going to text. So we have a bunch of options of wildlife rehabbers we can call. Okay, so, yeah. So I think I'm going to call South Florida Wildlife Center, and maybe I'll call the other, you others. call Flamingo Gardens. Yeah. So, guys, that's going to end today's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed today's raccoon rescue. Again, I wish that we could feed them because... If we were, we would know how to feed them, but again, if we feed them, it would be breaking the law, so we can't do that. So guys, that's going to end today's episode. Hope you guys did enjoy today's raccoon rescue. So Hannah and I are going to get to making some phone calls. I'm going to make sure to keep all of you guys updated on how these little babies do. I mean, again, they're just so, so adorable. So again, if you guys want to see how these adorable raccoons do, well guys, all you got to do is go right now, hit the subscribe button, tap that little notification bell, and you'll be notified whenever I post.